Hey guys, Ed the AV Guy here. Wanted to address a question that I get a lot, uh, that I've seen a lot uh, on my video wall uh, in reference to what kind of hardware that I use, how do I get that up and running, that sort of thing. Um, I wanted to go through the uh, the the specifics of the hardware. I don't want to go into the specific brand or model because I don't really endorse one or the other. I picked my stuff up on the cheap, so you know I, I didn't want to go too much into it. Uh, I wanted to address just kind of the big picture. What do you need to make that happen? So the very first thing that you're going to want is you know kind of a breakdown of hardware. Uh, and and what I recommend there's kind of there's a couple of key components. A is your uh, displays. So I got mine on an, a Black Friday sale, you know, and they're Vizios. They're they're pretty inexpensive, um, but you want to consider a couple of things. The first thing is your bezel size. How thick is that border going to be? When you put the displays together, that will make your grid larger or smaller depending on how big that bezel is. Now, it's nice, this one you can see has a very, very thin, you may or may not be able to see, but it's got a very, very thin bezel here. It's probably uh, a sixteenth, maybe an eighth of an inch max. Um, however, when I turn on the TV, as you'll see, it's actually, the border's much larger than that. The, the, glass, the glass goes all the way to this, you know, edge, but the actual panel inside is shy of that glass edge. So, in, in general, you can expect to see about a half inch of a border all the way around your TV. And of course, when you stack your televisions together, you're going to end up with a full one inch, you know, gap between your displays, okay? And so what that means is you're going to end up with some crosshairs on your video wall. Now, to me, that kind of feels like a big deal, but never once have I had anyone, you know, complain. Granted, my kids use it most of the time, um, but my kids have never once said anything about it. They, that is their favorite TV to use is the big video wall. It's 55 inch displays. So you've got a 110 inch screen. Who doesn't love that? They love to play with all their friends. They got Minecraft or X or Halo or whatever they're playing, you know, and they'll have, they'll have uh, each person has their own individual screen, which is kind of nice. But even when they play in the first person shooters, you know, where the crosshairs are right there in the middle of that grid, I, my son hasn't, you know, complained. A lot of Fortnite, a lot of Halo. Um, I, he hasn't complained about it. So anyways, there's a couple of key things that you're going to want to look at. You're going to want to, um, uh, you know, address hardware wise. And the first, like we said, is the bezel size. The next is going to be the display itself. You're going to want a display that, uh, that, that is going to suit your needs bezel wise, but also consider the brand and the the availability of it because inevitably you might have a failure and if you have a failure you want to go back and be able to get that TV again. Now you do want uniformity on at least three of the sides okay so uh, my left and my right and my top are all very uniform here at the bottom of this display um, there is a it's a little bit different on this one I think there's like a little a bump out down here at the bottom where the logo is so in this case my top displays I need to invert so that they fit and that's that's okay we can deal with that we just need three sides that are uniform that way we can stack the displays together in this four by four array the standard displays that you would find you know tvs out of best buy or whatever you can get for pretty inexpensive i mean we're talking you can start building the video wall for under 300 dollars a display and end up with a hundred inch you know uh screen pretty easily if we actually move to video wall specific displays, add a zero to that number. Um, you're not, you're going to be hard pressed to find a video wall display, um, true video wall display with a thinner border um, uh, bezel uh, for, for under $3,000 a piece. They're very expensive. They're designed for continuous operation and those bezels are just tiny so you end up with very little grid in your video wall you can also spend a lot of money and get to no grid i mean you can get bezels that are just about seamless displays that are just about seamless um, but the the cost goes up a whole lot so 
Uh, anyways, uh, pick your display, you know, with careful consideration. Consider those bezel sizes. Consider the availability of the set so you can fix it if something goes wrong or replace it. I did have one of my TVs fail and I had to, I had to get it fixed, so kind of a pain. I'm going to talk about the hardware needed to make displays uh, into one congruent, one just make it seem like one display. And we're going to do that with what we call a video wall controller. Now these come in all kinds of flavors and variations. Uh, anywhere from a two display video wall controller to 200. Um, and, and prices range considerably. You can get one for a couple hundred bucks on eBay. You can also spend over six figures on a high-end commercial production quality video wall controller. Think concerts, think large venues, um, Vegas, right? Anywhere where they're going to put a bunch of displays together where they, um, you know, all kinds of sizes and shapes and they can, they can put, push the video seamlessly across those. Um, I, I don't have a specific brand that I recommend. Uh, this is one that I did use originally. I got rid of it because it doesn't support 4K, right? So I, I had four 4K TVs, which could in theory push a very high resolution output, right? Up to 8K uh, because I had that much resolution, uh, but I was only pushing a 1080p signal to it. So I wanted to upgrade that. So I upgraded to a 4K. But this one, that's one of the things you want to consider. Okay, we're going to go through this, but uh, this is a video wall controller. Now, um, I'll probably put an image up on screen, but on the back here, you'll see there are four, this one is controls four displays. So I actually have four HDMI outputs and you're gonna put each one of these to each one of your TVs, right? So uh, display number one, HDMI out number one would be your top left. HDMI two would be your top right, just like you're reading a page, then three, then four, okay? It has, it has an input on the bottom, and that input is whatever you want it to be. Maybe it's a media player, Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, whatever. Maybe it's your computer, maybe it's your gaming console, maybe it's your receiver so that you can switch inputs easily. But essentially, this becomes the back of your TV, right? This is where your input is gonna be plugged into. All of your other TVs will plug into this box. They become dumb at that point. They're just displays. The, the, the inputs are gonna be coming from this box here. So four outputs and we've got our one input on here that we're gonna to feed to those. But as far as the input is concerned, be it the Xbox, um, the source, uh, the Xbox or the, the media player, whatever it is, it thinks it's just going to one TV. It doesn't know that you have four TVs connected to it. It's connecting to your controller, which is then feeding that out that that source to different displays in this case we've got four so it's going to take the top left 25 percent of the incoming hdmi signal and feed it to that one and so on and so forth through the rest of the displays there's a lot of features in here that make the controller very useful uh, I, I talked to you earlier about the top display sometimes needing to be inverted because of the way the bezel is built on the tv this allows for control on that, right? I can, I can go into the menu of this controller and we can flip the top left TV, for example, upside down. That's what I had to do in my media room there, my game room. I had to t flip the top left and the top right TVs upside down so that they would fit seamlessly with the other TVs, give me the smallest bezel possible. So the top left and the top right displays are inverted. So we can go into the menu of this video wall controller and invert those. We can also change the spacing left, right, up, down to really make those uh, displays all line up just right. You'll notice once you get your video wall installed, you're going to need to do some tweaking to get all the letters and the, just all the lines to flow perfectly across. And that's what these are fantastic for. I would say the two biggest features, it's called uh, it's called splicing, by the way, that last thing. Uh, the, the two biggest features are the, the inverting of the image, right, uh, with this guy. 
and then the ability to splice to change that uh, change that gap between your bezels so that you get a perfect you know seamless look where you don't you know you don't see the stock ticker going across the bottom and then it jumps up by a pixel or two as it continues across to the next screen so that's what these things are great for get them on eBay get them on Amazon go to you know there's there's all kinds of stores online that sell them that you know and like I said the sky's the limit on those I personally got mine from eBay <laughs> I think I spent 275 bucks on it then I upgraded it I got a different one right that does 4k uh, pay attention to that not only a lot of them will say that they're 4k but they only support an incoming 4k signal and they don't output a 4k signal pay attention read all the specifications and just because it says 4k doesn't mean it's going to do 60 frames per second right uh, just because it says 4k on there doesn't mean it's going to do your 444 or your dolby vision or, or whatever it is that you want it to do you you need to do your research um, certainly you start jumping into those, you know, all those finer details of the, the signal quality, the price is going to, is going to go up accordingly. Now, video walls are awesome. There's another thing that is commonly associated with video walls. And that is I've got four displays up there. I want to see four different things. A video wall controller does not do that. A video wall controller does not split your four displays into four different images, right? It takes four displays and makes them into one monitor. This box, all it does is turn four things into just one monitor. And that's that and now it's just now you just think of it as a normal TV or a normal computer monitor. And that's what it's seen as from the sources. The the ability to split a a screen into multiple image we call that a multi-viewer, right? Pretty practical, that name, a multi-viewer. Um, you're seeing multiple sources at one time. Very similar to this box, and I'll put that one on screen. Um, whereas it has, it, it, it will have anywhere from two to, again, we can go up to, the sky's the limit almost. You can have a bunch of inputs. I've seen, I've personally seen a 64 input multi-viewer where it'll take 64 inputs and it'll split them up onto one screen and it'll hack them up however you want. The multi-viewer or quad for us old school guys is um, they, again, a lot of different flavors and they're very, they're pretty similar in price point to the, um, to the video wall controller. But the more features you get, let's say you want more inputs. Maybe you want to put eight things on a screen or maybe you want to be able to do um, some tricky stuff like fading in and fading out or kind of overlays or picture in picture or all kinds of different stuff, right? The, the, as you add features, so, so goes the price. In, in my situation, I'll pull it up here. Um, I just went with a simple four-way multi-viewer. Mine has several viewing options, right? So I can do either just two images side by side. I can do a standard four-way split, which is pretty simple, right? Four-way split screen. Um, you can also do like one on the side and then three smaller ones on the other side. A um, lot of different options. Um, you can see right here, I've got it pulled up. So this is obviously just a regular TV and I've got four different images. We've got uh, Netflix going on here. I've got the Roku there. Um, so you can see that I've got, you know, an antenna feed right here. I've got my cameras over there, you know, a lot of cool stuff, right? We can get a lot of things playing at once and it's nice. It's very nice. You can, um, you know, w with, with streaming players now, it's super easy to, you know, if you will, cable box, you can plug four cable boxes into these multi multi viewers and do four games at once. Right. Really neat. Um, but yeah, so, so let's see, and I'll, I'll flip through the different uh, views here. Standard four-way split. I can make it into, you know, this is the top left, you know, image goes full screen. Um, if I do it again, this is a really weird one, but left, right, two in the middle that are standard aspect, but these are super stretched on the side. Uh, there's your side-by-side. -side. Uh, there's your 
single large image here and three on the side. I actually kind of like this one. It, this one's almost in the correct aspect. It's not, obviously, but it's pretty close. And then these three are in the correct aspect. Um, so main game right here and, you know, three smaller there. Uh, I usually leave it on the four-way split. I kind of like maintaining the aspect. Um, usually puts less, you know, work on the multi-viewer. But anyhow, this is a multi-viewer. That's what a multi-viewer does. We can pretty easily select the audio on any one of those channels pretty easily uh, by just cycling through the, the remote. This also, you can think of this like a switch, if you're familiar with an HDMI switch, where you plug in one cable to your TV, one HDMI cable, and then you plug all your sources into this switch. So uh, an amplifier, a receiver, an AVR, audio video receiver, is a good example of an HDMI switch, where you have your game console, your cable box, your you know cameras if you've got them, maybe a Blu-ray player, whatever it is, into that AVR, and then you select the input on that AVR, and it sends the output on one cable to your TV. It's a good solution for when you have a lot of devices connected to your television, and instead of um, having to run, you know, five cables to your TV, you just run the one HDMI to your TV, and you connect everything very close and locally to that receiver. The the multi-viewer can function in the same way. You have all of your inputs plugged in to the multi-viewer, and then you can select, you know, which one to go output and go full screen. I showed you that was one of the options, right? Just going full screen with one image right here. Now we can switch, you know, pretty easily between um, the different options here. So, so you can see right there, I'm switching. That's pretty hard switch, but um, I just switched to one of the Roku's or we can switch to the cameras here, you know. Um, but then again, we can always go back to, I can hit the view button and we can get back to a four way split screen, no problem. So you can use a multi viewer as a switch. I don't know, that might've been a little bit heady. Hopefully I explained that pretty well, but there you go, multi-viewer versus a video wall controller, two different things, um, but that's what you're gonna search for when you search you know, Amazon or eBay or Google or Yahoo, if you will, whatever you're gonna uh, use as your search feature there. Search for a video wall controller and search for the array that you're looking for. Most people are looking for a two by two and then a multi-viewer. <coughs> and just do your research again, due diligence on the resolutions that's supported and the number of displays supported, number of sources supported. Uh, all those things are very uh, important. So there it is. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Hopefully you gain a little bit of knowledge, a little insight. Uh, you'd be the talk of the town if you have a four-way split screen. You'd be the only guy in your neighborhood that can, you know, guy or gal in your neighborhood that can put four games on at once on any of their TVs. Um, so anyways, hey guys, thanks for listening. AV guy out.